I'm Susan Moses. I've been co-director of the String Academy for many, many years. And today we're beginning some lessons with a very beloved student, Ethan Murphy. Now he's 12, going on 13 in another month. But Ethan has been with me since he's about five. And if you're interested, you can go back to some of our old String Academy videos and you'll even see him playing when he was a little boy. Welcome, Ethan. Okay, so today we're just having a lesson, no problems, okay? I thought, though, at the beginning, since this is our first lesson for YouTube, that we'll just go through with everyone our basics that we do every time anyway, because basics are the basis of all our playing at all times. So, okay, we've tuned, so we won't go through tuning today, but let's just stand up. Okay, we're walking into the room. Hi, Ethan, how are you? Uh, great, okay, so the first thing that we work on is sitting. So I want everyone, and you too, every time before you start to play, just go back and forth, left and right, left and right. Feel your body balance. You know, feel that you're breathing from your diaphragm, your shoulders are relaxed. Just like when I come behind you and say, hi, Ethan, just nice and relaxed. Everything should feel great. Never any tension, never any worries, never any anxiety. Lessons are where we're learning. So we're just here to work together. Okay, honey, then let's see. Let me see the height of your end pin now. You're, he's growing all the time. Stand up a minute. Let's see. You see, the, the cello normally might come to your nose. So let's try raising. Yeah, it depends. Let, get it a little closer to you. Let's see how far off we are. It's still probably, try putting it an inch higher. Try putting it an inch higher. See, I, if I'm standing, I guess it comes about to my nose. I, I have it today. I had it a little higher, but I'll lower it. Okay, let's just try this, okay? Now, when you sit down again, remember the feet are the most important beginning for the cello. I'm talking to everybody, I'm talking to you. You know, our feet, even though we're sitting in a chair and many of you are practicing like this and not thinking it doesn't matter, it matter. It changes everything. Ethan's heard me say this many times. So, honey, let's um, just feel your feet on the ground. Hold your cello out at arm's length, and just, we go up and down. We go up and down. Wonderful. And then sit down, but sit lightly on your sitting bone so that you're ready to move at any time. Pick up your feet, lean back a little, pick up your feet and come down, come back up. Right, be relaxed, then sit down and into your feet. That's it, that's it. You've got to be going to the cello. Now what we do is show everybody. I feel that there's a magnet here on the cello and a magnet on my heart. And hold the cello out at arm's length. Now let's see, get the left corner going to your left knee, right about here. Let's see. That's good, that's good. You see, now it's about the right height. It could even be a tiny bit higher, a tiny bit higher, make it. There you go. Let's see. Now I know you've been practicing with it lower, so you might feel a little funny, but you'll see by next week, you won't notice it. That's good. And then put the left knee and then, here, hold your right leg out a minute, and then add your right leg like a vice. So we're really just, look, left knee, right knee, and then we have a vice, okay? We're holding the cello, then drop your shoulders. Great, look up, look out. Remember, we're always trying to be open to the world, to what we're doing, that we're playing out, that we're never just crushing in when we play, but we're opening out. Wonderful. Then, kiddo, let's just lower your shoulders, then get, get a good grip on the bow. And I just put the bow on my knee 
and make sure that your thumb is bent. So you just do a little of this and relax your shoulder, your right shoulder a lot. Okay, now let's just bring the bow around and go to the D string, okay? At the frog, and we'll play just a half a bow like this. Uh... <laughs> To your pinky here when you start. Relax a little more like that. Try kiddo. Uh, great, great. Here, let's try, let's just try, see what happens. Add your pinky a little more into the bow. Just relax this and just be good. And then without raising your shoulder, you know, just this motion. Mr. Starker, remember, did I, sh I show you this? When he would have us do this at the beginning, just, you see, when you move your arm like this, it naturally, the elbow naturally follows out and the shoulder stays down, okay? Now, um, let's show everyone Another way how to feel the bow. Let's put our end pins way down. Let's do it the way they do in France. I lived in France for many years. So I learned so much in Paris because there's the great French school of cellists, Navarra, Tortelier, Fournier. He, he lived in Switzerland. So what they do in Paris at the beginning, and this is a very good way for everybody to get set. Now... I'm going to ruin the foot theory because we, we have to throw our feet back here. Now hold your cello, grip it low, and just leave your, great. Now put the bow the way you were doing on your knee and now put the bow here. You see how your shoulder is hanging? And let's just do half a bow too. Uh, Feel heaviness in your side. Feel heavy. Great, honey. Now, now let's add. Is it out of tune? You want to fix it? Sure. Of course. Great, no problem. Okay, what we're looking for, too, sweetheart, all the time, is that we lie the bow on the string. But also, there's like a magnet on the string drawing the string inside the hair of the bow. So you feel this magnetic, even what you can do is with your sternum, now lower, go lower with your mid tummy, bring the string to the bow. So we're doing two things. Let's put the bow here, put the bow on the string, and now slightly push forward and hold the string inside the bow. Now try it. Try it. Good. Now, when you get to the end of the bow, feel, feel, take a feel right here. This is, the muscle right here is like a cello muscle. You'll feel it. It's where these muscles come up and meet the shoulder, okay? So, feel, uh, feel it, and now push back. Pull, push, pull, push. Let's stop, stop between the down bow and the up bow, okay? Okay, you hear how the, it's, it's no problem. You hear the up bow wasn't as pure as the down. So let's figure out why. Why do you think? Try it, try it again. Okay, yeah. Try not um, changing the angle of the stick, but just finish. Then you can even point with your finger on the place on the bow that you've arrived. Try that. Now point, now feel exactly that place and push back. Now let's use even less 
last bowl, okay? Let's imagine that we have a mini bow, like a, uh, from a doll's house, okay? A baby bow. And, oh, for your little sister, by the way, I have a cello for her. His little sister's going to start soon, too, so we're going to do that. Anyway, we're going to imagine a bow for Ayana, okay? Very small. This is the tip, okay? So you're just going to do a... <laughs> get in that very small space the motion that the arm makes when we draw a full bow, okay? Maybe pronate, kiddo, just a drop more, pronate a drop more. That's better. Come back. Good. Wonderful. Now, another way to think about this, and we might even do a whole lesson on all these things today, it's so interesting. Look, feel that the bow is an airplane, you're a great pilot, an airplane landing. So it's coming from out here, and then we hit the string here. Because the bow being an arco, an arch, always makes a circle on the string like this. Take, take your left hand, hold the bow here, and you're going to just feel like you're a pilot taking off and then coming back. a circle. So you just do this with your arm, okay, and you're always feeling that. Now, now, in Paris, they even have you play with the cello low like this for a month even, just to get the whole body settling into the cello, just forward. Now, lean forward into your cello, and let's draw a whole bow. So, uh, and... Now, as you start doing this, you can do, the feeling in the arm is as if you were doing this. So, at the beginning of this, try that first. G and D. that you're practically touching the G string, but you don't. Then you go through, and then at the end, you're practically touching the A string, but you don't. But never with your shoulder, no tension, okay? So now let's try a D, but feeling G and A. Uh, good. Here, let me help you. When you get up to the end, slightly, okay, the feeling's going to be this. See, it's going to be this. So, at the beginning, you're practically down. Uh, now, practically go to the A. Right. Now, come down, practically the G. And, and close. Close. Okay? Now, try that and feel great about it. Don't worry. Just listen to the richness of the sound. Fine, if it's not enough, see if you move a tiny bit forward into your feet. You see, we're always in our feet, everybody. The feet have to be on the ground and really relaxed and supple, okay? So let's try that. But we go down. It's funny, but that's the way it is. Okay? Okay. 
Great, so we're just, those are things to be thinking about. Okay, now, okay, now let's get our cello back to, and again, the best way, I, I mean, there are many, you know, there are many heights for the end pin. Some people like to play very high, some people, I always like the middle ground, just where your body is balanced. Now, let's just talk about the chair. He's grown an immense amount, so this chair now is perfect for you. But make sure, everyone, that when you're sitting on the chair, you're from the hip to the knee. You see how Ethan is? Hold your cello, kiddo. See, his hip to his knee is perfectly straight. It shouldn't be either like this or up like this. Perfectly straight. Then we do left side, right side. Okay. And then from the knee to the floor, your foot is straight down. Now, on, on this particular chair that I have, I've added this because it was a little low for me. So, you know, we're just always, always, everybody, look for the right chair. It's really worth it. Sometimes if you have a piano bench at home that goes up and down, that's perfect. Or really look for a cello chair. Go to the Target or somewhere. Find a folding chair that's flat, perhaps, if you don't have one at home, that just gets you this. It has to be right angles, right angles. And this is how we're centered, just like a violinist standing up. You see, they have this natural, but we have this chair in the way. So just make sure the chair is right at home, which I know you do now. Okay, so let's just begin the way I begin with, and you know, you begin your practicing too. Eventually, we're going to be working on just a few of the Rococo variations through the semester, just because I'd like Ethan to get a head start on the very difficult variations so that, and using them as etudes practically, and then of course they'll become music, but use it, we're gonna use them as etudes so that you're really setting your hand and you're getting set to play that. He's played wonderful repertoire. He's done uh, all the, Romberg Concerti, Davidoff, he's done Accolade Concerto, he's done Goltermann concertos. It's very important. I, tr you know, I believe in Romberg, Goltermann, all the old masters of the cello, Dotzauer, all those things. It's where we get our cello DNA from. So don't think that he's only 12 and I'm skipping to Rococo variations. We haven't skipped at all, not at all. But this, this is kind of a jump. It's a new experiment I'm trying because I thought it would be a good way for him to get his hands on that. But anyway, the way we begin every day to get warmed up, this is if we haven't played at all, let's do some rolls. These wonderful rolls I learned from a student of mine who was studying with the wonderful, my wonderful colleague, Stephen Doan. You know, and Stephen teaches rolling the hand so that we are constantly centering the playing finger with all our energy, that the energy always transfers finger to finger into it's center. So let's do a fourth finger, a uh, fourth position roll, okay? Do one for me, honey, in closed position. And we'll do it on the A string. Da, 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 da. Beautiful. You want to do it again? Um, yeah, and everybody, he did it beautifully. Make sure that your fingers are nice and round, that you're playing on the things. That he, you did it perfectly. Good. And, and then um, try to make two as you're going to the tip of crescendo. Move your body to. And I have you repeat the fourth note so you're really getting a good vibrato. It's a wonderful vibrato exercise. And it's, so move, I move to the right. Okay, 
and get your sound warmed up just beautifully, yeah? <laughs> you're moving up the bow, feel the concentration of the sounding point into the string. Uh, every note. Feel every note. Okay. Da, 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 da. Good. Now try Ethan adding. As you go to the tip, roll the stick slightly and use flat hair. So when you're here on the fourth finger, you really have all the hair on the string. That's Russian school, you know. Da 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 da. Then Mr. Don't has every hair. So do that one. Go forwards and back. Let's go to the third finger. Then do the entire roll. Da -da 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 -da. Now do the entire roll to two. Da -da -da -da. Since Rococo is in A major, let's do an A, a, an open position. Then we go to open position. Now, everybody, when we go to open position, make sure, first of all, that your elbow is supple. Let me see. How should I be facing so you can see my left elbow better? Maybe this is better. Yeah, you see? So come around. <laughs> Just roll your body. And you know what I have? Oh, Eve, let's show everybody what we do too. As a stretching exercise before we begin, just try, you know, doing this. Hug yourself. <laughs> and just open your back. Open your back. Oh, feel so good about the chill. I want your shoulders soft and, yeah, open here. Good. So, he, Ethan has wonderful long fingers. They're fabulous. They're longer than mine. Even. So, um, he won't have to do it as much as, as some other people because we all have to adapt to our size. But, kiddo, just da-da-da-da, come around, okay? So, try that for me. Da-da-da-da. <laughs> Now, now also move. So, as we move, as you move, follow the sounding point with your nose. So, as you're going up, see how I'm, I'm always like a laser going from my face, my concentration is going to that sounding point. Try it. Yeah, feel it. You're right there with it. Now come back. Good. Da -da -da. Okay. Now we're going to do a little experiment because when you came back to the A after the extension, it got a little sharp. Do you know why? You have an idea? No, it's because you were stretching. So as you stretched for the C sharp, this finger got a little, I mean, it was very close to being perfectly into, but it wasn't exactly the same A. So be really aware. Let's do it with an open D string. So let's see. Stop on the 
And now, to go back to the A, the feeling should be that you're, can you see everybody scratching your ear? Um, I scratched my ear so well, the ear in came up. Let's go again. second finger gets sharp. It gets sharp because we've done an extension and then we're coming back and it moves. So I'd suggest a Then, and then you'll do uh, the same thing. Okay, good, good. That's you see, these are all things to have fun with. Never think that 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 it's boring practicing doing that. But, oh, it's fun. It's so close, but it's not in tune. And I'll get it better. I'll get it better, better. Okay, okay. Now I thought we would just do another thing that I might do. We'll do Galamian scales another day and other scales. But today, let's just do, I love the Feuillard book, F-E-U-I-L-L-I-A-R-D. Feuillard was a great French master and teacher in the Paris Conservatory, and he made a fantastic book of technical study. I just love it. And so I, I make, for my students, I make grief and I, take from many great books and I make a little technique packet. So let's just do, this is an exercise for developing the agility of the fingers, you know, that they're very agile. He has very good agile fingers. So I pick, let's say, the, the theme of the Rococo Variations is in A major. So let's just do the A major one. Now, we're going to do it in two ways. We're going to do it with the slur, the way it's written. And then we're going to do it with just separate bows, because then I will talk about timing of shifts, finger, and the bow, how we're really clear about what we're doing. But first do it, do it just the way it's written, honey. <laughs> Good, 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 good. See, Ethan has very long fingers, so you know, you don't have to roll quite so much. I really think though, kiddo, you should apply the rolls in everything you're doing, even though it, because you'll get better clarity of intonation. So try, when you go to four, bring your arm around. And then we do a scoop as you slide from one to one, really scoop. As you go up to the top, press into your toes a little more. Like this, honey. See, I'm using my feet a little to give me a little more control. Because if we're like this, you're just in one place. But this, the feet help balance the left hand. Try that. Do it again. That was perfect. That was great. Now try it. Not changing the rhythm. Uh, then we have to do a slide back too. Uh, okay. Uh, 
okay? Good. Now try the next one of them. Not bad, but... Okay, and then add, just so you know, as you're going toward the tip of the bow, you add that laser-like thought going to the tip. Let's try it. Come on, try it. Da-da-da. Great, that was great. Now let's go. We're going from a closed position, the next one to an open position. So, and when you get in full, really, oh, let's, let's just review. Look, so you see the height of the elbow where it needs to be. Do this, honey. Put your, el your thumb on the nut of the cello, put down your second finger, and now just slide slowly through the positions. You see when we're in fourth position where the elbow should be? Just go up. And now come down. Go up. Good. So when you go up. So you're really up here. Try it. Good. Now when we get... Um, sure we plop two and three. I mean three and four. Just do E after you. Just go back and forth. Wonderful. Okay, so you get the idea. Okay, now let's, now we're going to work on something that I've noticed that even advanced students like you were not aware enough of the timing of the finger and the bow. Always, 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 we have to have finger before bow. That you know, we say it a lot, I tell you all that, finger before bow. But let's practice detache with very little bow at the frog and shift. Shift. And we're going to wait. We're, first, the exercise is to wait. When you have a shift, we're going to wait and make sure the finger's in place. So do the wait exercise. Good. Now that that was so good, you can do it a little faster. Just try to anticipate your finger a little so, but not, don't leave out the weight entirely, okay? <laughs> Wonderful. Now let's try the next one. <laughs> wait. <laughs> now, okay, now we're going to incorporate too. When, bom, ba, when you put down the four, let's try and get our third finger down too. <laughs> let's try it. Come on. That's good. Now the next one. Okay, these you can do a little more connected. Wait. Oh, teacher, that was a bad sound. And we've got to listen always to make beautiful sounds. And if we don't, there's, okay, it's a learning process, and we'll fix it, make it better, okay? Da, da, da. So that when, yeah, we're doing this one. So when you do, uh, these are continuous fingers, so you don't need to wait with the bar. Wait. Two That's a three. I would put a three here. Okay, try that. Ba, ba. Okay, now your hand no, was beautiful. With your beautiful hand, though, try to add getting the first joint of the fingers really down on the straight. So, round, round. And then here, 
here in sixth position. Okay. Okay, here, try a rounder thing. Like you were standing up on that finger. Popper 27. So let's just apply it to it. We'll just do a few lines of it today, okay? So try. You'll do a wait, position change. Wait, position. Okay, this is the first line is pretty self evident. Then, okay, then we're going to get to a scale passage. Finger bow, so we wait two times. Uh, finger bow. Wait. Okay? Just try that. Just a little exercising. second too soon. Finger. Just tell yourself finger. Try. Me. Me. Quickly. Wait. Finger. Finger. Now you have to wait two times. Finger and then the bow on the new string. Wait. the height of the arm for each string is to put your bow really on top of the bridge. Put it there. Okay, now on the C string, keep your arm on the C string. Now roll to the G string. Feel your arm, now roll to the G string. And then A string, okay? So you feel, this is the level, D, G, C. Then the other thing to be, you know, but Let's play um, a C major scale. Roll. Roll. Now, the thing to keep in mind, because of you know, but let's show and you, everybody and show yourself too. On the C string, to get a good sound, the tip has to come out, right? So play the first four notes. Ball, ball. Now, yeah, now roll to the G string. Now, it's a little less out on the G string. It's straighter. Finger first. Now roll to the D string. Now on the D string, we come in a little. Now A string, we come in even more. Fine. Okay, so really check C string in. The tip points out. Try it. Do it. Do, demonstrate. Now, G string, it's a little straighter. D string, it's straight. Now, A string, come out. And the great thing about the A string, which in French, you know, is called la chantrelle, the singing string, for melodies is that not only do we play on top of the string, but we can play on the side of the string. So we'll work on a melody. Why don't we, now, okay, now we're gonna jump and do just little things in the Rococo, okay? That he's just starting, he, it's really a first lesson. We'll do a few phrases. 
from the third variation, okay? Yeah, I made a few changes as usual. Like most cellists, we set fingerings and we give fingerings to our students and then half the time during the thought process of the lesson, we come up with something else that might be better. So Ethan knows he has to be very supple with me when we're working because we're, we're always trying, we're always experimenting. Okay, now, hang on. I think this is the piece, the, the one I came up with this at home. Okay, I've been reworking it, Eve. Let me just get my, <laughs> okay, quickly. Let me get another stand. So I will be playing from another part. Okay. Oh, it's this one. Hang on. Here it is. Give it in here yet. This is the one. Yeah, here it is. We'll just do the very beginning, okay? Of this variation. Okay. Lainey Harico, would you just play the chords for? Because it'll be he'll, yes. he'll enjoy it more. We're very lucky because Ethan's mom Haruko Murphy is a marvelous pianist, so we take advantage of her. Today I'm making her sight read, but that's we're just it's just a lesson, and that's how we do things in lessons. Okay, now since we were talking about the A string being the chantelle, Eve. I want you to feel when you're starting just that you're uh, you're coming around. Come just play the G for me. Just the first go. Beautiful. Okay, so let's do let's just do the first three lines going up there, something like that, okay? And he's it's his first lesson, so no problem. one of the most poignant big variations of the piece. It's one of the central variations. And so let's just look on the air. Try, try moving again. Let's do some experimenting with your tummy muscles. Move. Just try that. Move the string a little more into the hair of the bow. You have to feel like th there's a magnet on your string and a magnet on the hair, and they're just sucked into each other, and as if the bow was drawing the string inside it and your fingers, okay? And try slightly moving. Again, you have to add what you were doing, honey, with as we went to the tap on that was an oh dad we have to find where 
on the string. Let's try it first. Get closer to the bridge and see what kind of sound it makes. Oh, let's also tune to the piano. Can we have an A? Does it sound better here? Does it sound better here? Does it sound better here? Now I suggest this will be ugly. I said, why, why are you making me? Up? But play sometimes to break the string in close to the bridge. Play in a play. Just try it here. really comes to life closer to the bridge. Try that a few times. Just play so, so. Now you won't need to play there, of course. Play where you think. Did you did you kind of experiment around to find or did you a little? Okay, let's see. What did you find? Okay. Good. Okay. So now as you're going, ba da, we want the same sound. So, move with the with, with the bow. Okay. So now try it. Try it again. Okay. Okay, just that was beautiful. Um, I suggest kiddo when you go Don't use the harmonic there. I wouldn't do that. I don't know, so Plop two and three. Just play. Plop two and three. Yeah, because I see as you're coming down, you don't mean to, and it sounded it sounded already very good. But you you want to master getting this key. Okay, so try. shift up. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, another way to practice, because there are position changes, would be to use stop bow. So you've got to learn to anticipate sooner. Try just uh, try that. Okay, now there I'd use I'd use an extension too. You have such big hands too. Uh, scratch your ear. And then bring your elbow back so you can scoop to the G. So uh, back. and stop. You're not 
going to stop. I want you to play them all. You were playing a beautiful legato. But you want to be sure, okay, that you've got the control. Try it again. The whole thing. Uh -huh. Position change. Just try. Okay. Then pour. Then look. We land backwards like this. Then we have to rotate the arm to go up. So just try. You can make a little shifting exercise. Uh, and then all those things. Try it and then do da 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 da. It's so sharp. Play a C major chord to Haruko, please. do too it's very helpful at the end of the shift slow down don't rush so um, you can uh, go to F sharp string and it's much easier so try it. <laughs> Ready better. Uh, 
Now, to, let's try something. This is really helpful. Make the most beautiful sound you've ever made on the B. If you didn't have to worry about getting to the B or do anything, just play the B with the most beautiful sound you've ever made. Just try it. Just try. What do you think? That's pretty good. I think you can find even more beautiful, all right? Now, also, you can change the speed of your vibrato. Da -da. So make it a little faster. Good. Now play. Okay. Okay. You do that a few times in the best way you can. Just the best way. Then your body, your muscles are going to remember that feeling. When you get there, just remind them that they know how to do it. So do a They're gonna remember that and they're gonna do it. So try it. we want to. So practice lots all teacher Meza always taught his students pretend you're on a bike okay you're riding your bike and you're going downhill da, da, da. then you're going up and then you have a big drop so I almost might change the bow for that you could do a maybe to change this bowing. So try, try. I'd like to, so I'm 
gonna change the volume too. I thought about it. Da, da, da. Then you do two two because of that slide. Da, da, da. Then da, yeah. Because that's the way you're coming down and then opening up to that gorgeous A, which is a note the cello loves. So let's try. So fa mi fa do do la da 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 da. da. So. Then, here, kiddo. Here, we're coming down our scale. Mi, re, do, mi. Feel this C as if it was an upbeat to the E. Let's try this. I'll show you and then you try it. And you'll do it better than I do. That that E has to be again like me. So let me see, I might change another fingering. the finger. Let's try. I might go to a two, one, two, but let's try this. It, all the fingerings are good, you know. The problem is, what are you going to do that day? Let me see what time it is. What time? Does anybody know what time it is? Quarter to tell. Okay. So let's do uh, Oh yeah, I don't want to do a fourth finger there though. Let's go to a two here. So it sings more. So just try this. Don't try it in a C. things at home too and say Susan we'll try them all okay try so fa mi fa do re la da 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 di do di do A juicy slide. Yeah, yeah, good, great. Now, now, allow yourself to follow a little more with the bow, honey. Yeah. 
right at the very. But remember, you'll work on it. Da 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 da. Stretch. Don't make a shift. <laughs> exaggerate a little, but just to give you the idea of what that da ya da Casals always said when there's a small note after a long note to do da ya da da see when you do this uh, it really needs that so when you do uh, you're doing. So let's practice from uh, the first. I, I've been playing around with this bowing. Uh, Is such a great idea. For the moment, we'll leave them and I'll think about it some more. Okay, so let's try from the first one. Uh, every time you go to the B, though, honey, allow your body slightly to rotate the wrist forward, just slightly. He has such good hands. Yeah. Okay, let, let's just stop. let's let's just stop on the B and find it centered. Um. Just play A. Now, when you get to the get more vibrato on the B and get the bow going to last. Good. Now, good. That was good. And find what the bow needs to do so it sings. Maybe change your bow speed. Oh, ooh, that was beautiful. Now let's try. Now we got to go on. I think I would 
do this. Uh... separate da 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 be separate okay my cello just went completely out of tune fingers okay it's four words backwards then four words da da four words back push roll all da it's all those and then the phrase see the fingering the way they're moving are indicative of what the phrase needs to in our in our interpretation it's not we never play two notes at the same level unless really a composer asks us to do it so try la da da special exercises. Practice it this way. La da 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 and slowly. Okay, I wouldn't put my thumb up, sweetie pie. Now also, this is a backwards motion. when you get to the E to open up your head even if you miss it completely right now don't worry bring your head out it's a little sharp still like Mr. Schnock always said put, here you can put your head down um, Just try it. Very exaggerated. Okay, but every time you get, you're hearing it a little sharp, honey. It's only the flat sharp. Yeah, so try.
Stay on the D string. D string. No, don't try it on. This is. Yeah. We'll just go a little farther. We'll get up to here today, okay? So let's try. Ba -ba -da. <laughs> Let's do this last. Oh, you, oh, uh, let's do the first one, okay? <laughs> Hearing you so much. That was great. 